<laughs> we're live. Something. Well, how do I do it from here? Can I do it? I mean, I'll try to share. So where are we? On my edge. That's it. Let me, let me try to get share. All right. Get. Yep. Hurry, Perry. So there's a problem with Facebook or something. So we can't share. We're only in the Maya Edge group currently. And anyway, Cass, how are you? What's happening? So back to my question. Are you getting hit yes. with the Arctic air? Um, yeah, man, it's been. It's been below zero for I don't, two weeks, maybe. I mean, in all fairness, it's been single digit temps, but with wind chill, it's been below zero. Like right now, it's 29, feels like 18. Tonight, it'll be five below. It's been wow. chilly. It's been wow, chilly. Wow. Are you still doing your five mile jogs every every morning? No, I upped it. You did? And the yeah. cold air doesn't bother your lungs? No, no. Not when you're a warrior. Good for you, man. Good for you. All right. Hello, everyone. Hello, Mr. Sheffield. Good and afternoon. Mr. Hanzu. Mr. Hanzu. How are you? Minus 12 in Ohio. Oh, Mr. One-Upman. All right, fine. Minus 12. <laughs> well, it's 70 here for a high. But, hey, we're going to drop into the high 20s. Uh, coldest air in four years. Matt, I have a question for you before we get started. Please. It's a leasing question. I'm in a relatively warm climate. I signed a lease in 2021, February, March. I'm responsible for my HVAC. <clears throat> I turned my heat on because it's kind of a little bit chilly, but not bad. And everything's fine. And then we get through the season. Now we're this year. And now it's colder than norm temps. And I'm like, my heat's not working. So I call the HVAC company. Now keep in mind, I signed my lease 2021. I call my, my I call the HVAC company. They come and check out my HVAC and they go on the roof and they look and they, the, 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 the gas line has been locked because it's too dangerous to operate it. So I call the, the gas electric company. They tell me that the gas line was locked in 2017. It cost me $1,400 to get my HVAC fixed. Do I go back to my landlord to pay that? Or is you it on me? Go back to, you definitely go back to your landlord and negotiate that out. 100%. Because it's not going to hurt you if you lose. Correct. Right. So the lesson, the lesson is, right, is they put in their pre-existing. So I'm, I'm happen to be looking at cars right now for my son because his car got totaled. But... If you're going to go get a car, same thing I would tell you in a leasing place, check the heat, check the air, check everything, have you do your due diligence and make sure, but that is a pre-existing condition. And when you do a lease, anybody, listen, tenants usually are responsible for their HVAC, HVAC, uh, tenants responsible with a maintenance contract, the whole nine, whatever. Uh, however, negotiating your lease that your landlord will warranty it, try for 24 months, but at minimum, Warranty for 12 months. So you can get through a whole season where you get through using the air and using the heat, making sure everything's working. All right. Let's talk about the show. We have a guest coming in. We have a special guest. Miss Denise Ramos is coming in. And uh, the title of this show was how one school owner in Oklahoma, and I would have been more specific. I just can't pronounce where she's from exactly. Um, kept her success a secret. And so, Tass, well, let's bring Miss Ramos in. Let's bring Miss right. Ramos in. She's all ready. Rumble. Here she is. Miss Ramos, hey. wake up for live. Hello, how are you? Great, ma'am. How are you? Good. So, first, thank you. The funniest lady in the martial arts, Mr. Blackman says. Did you know Good that day. you have that title? I I I've heard. Everybody thinks I'm funny except for uh, Paula, but that's okay because all my fans love me. Yeah, and that's all that matters. <laughs> that's, and we love you. So, Miss Ramos, listen, we, we wanted to bring on some special guests every other week or every so often on this show because we try to help people. We try to give them information. But people, 
not only need information, they need inspiration. And I think a lot of people are always, are also scared to take chances or, you know, they're not ready for, for this kind of level of help or, or they're afraid of failing, failing, like they're not gonna be able to do it. Tell us your story as far as a couple of years ago, you were a school owner. When did you open your school? How'd you, how'd you get here to Maya and being a, you know, part of the CMA family for that matter, but Maya. Uh, we opened, uh, April is going to be 11 years. Uh, and, um, uh, we started very small in a, in a gym. We had a little room and we paid the guy 20% of whatever it was that we made tuition wise. And then we, we grew to 20 students and we moved to our own standalone location. And at the time I was working in an office job nine to five and then afterwards i would come straight to the school paula was working at her hair salon she would come straight to the school and we we grew a little bit and then uh one day i told her i said hey you know what i i think I'm, i don't like my job i think i'm gonna go full time with the school just having 20 students and she was like that's fine but you better make it work and i was like okay so uh we grew to 50, to 60, 70. And I believe in 14, we went to a super show. It was our very first super show. Uh, we were kind of, didn't know what we were walking into. Our organization at the time said, and I quote, they said, don't go there. That's only for big wigs. What are you going to learn? And I said, well, I don't know. But if I learn something, it might be something that can help, right? Needless to say, we're no longer with that organization, but uh, we did, I believe uh, it's called, I don't know, it's like a free, th a free uh, seminar before Super Show where you guys actually talked about uh, the down payments and how the private centers, and it was so way over our heads, and I just looked at Paul and Paul looked at me, and I was like, man, I don't know, like, this is crazy. And we're very, from a very small town in it's Tahlequah, Oklahoma, and there's about 17,000 people here. And the average income is 20 to 30,000 a year. So uh, we were that mentality like this is never going to work in our town because they're in Orlando, they're in Albuquerque, they're in New York. Like this is crazy that they're just making up these numbers. So fast forward uh, four years after that, I had a great idea of opening a second location. And I told Paula, I said, hey, I'm, let's open a second location. And she's like, no, you're crazy. We need to get this one going first. And I was like, ah, nonsense. So then I texted Kurt and Kim uh, Klingemeyer and I said, he's going to tell me what I want to hear. And then he was like, absolutely not. You're not doing everything you're supposed to be doing. And I'm like, ah, so then... He walked me through the five profit centers. And then that summer, I took you guys' summer something, some kind of summer something. It was two months. And at the end of that, we were still not ready. It wasn't the right time. And then we had a mastermind. And I went to Orlando. And, um, and it was so funny because right before I left, Paul was like, okay, look at me dip into my eyes. Promise me you're not going to sign up for anything. And I'm like, okay. So I went, went to Orlando, rented a car, went down to the Avalon school. And um, anyway, then we walked down. We did the, the holiday event, um, met some wonderful people. And I came back to Tahlequah and... Uh, I signed up and I didn't tell Paula I had signed up because whenever Mesker said, hey, listen, we can help you. And by the time we get done, you're not even going to miss this amount that you're investing. And I'm thinking, man, this bald headed dude is like very confident, you know. And I was like, well, what do I have to lose? I have nothing to lose. If he works, he works. If he doesn't work, then I'm not even going to tell her I was signed up for it. So anyway so that was december january april and uh no well, hold, on. Hold, on. hold on well let's pause a minute let's pause so back it up so you went to the super show you didn't sign up for anything no. four years later four years later you did uh 
you, you, you did like the summer, you wanted to open a second school, but you did a consult with Klingenmeyer something, just a free consult and you didn't do it. And then, then what year was it that you came to Orlando? Do you remember? It was the, it was December of 18. December of 18. So 19, 20, 20 so three years ago, three years ago. Yeah. Okay. So you, you came to, and I remember you sat right there. Yeah. yeah. I remember. So three years ago, you came to this thing, and and how many students did you have then? At the time, we had ninety five. You had ninety five students, and correct me if I'm wrong. Grossing wise, were you grossing around thirteen, fifteen, what eighteen? What uh, were you grossing? I was grossing six thousand dollars. On excuse the, me, I'm sorry. I was, was yeah, uh, we were grossing six grand a month and eighteen. The following year. We went from grossing six to 13 and then well, hold uh, on. You're, going, you're going too fast. So you did, you were, when you came here, you're grossing 6,000. Yes. So 70,000 a year, roughly. Yeah. And okay. Did I say, did I say something to you? Like, do you remember what I said to you? You said, Ms. Ramos. We were about doubling your, your revenue. By this time next year, we're going to be doubling your revenue. That's did you believe him? I guess you did. No, I didn't up. believe any of you guys. I mean, I was like, you know, I'm going to give it a try. And then if it doesn't work, I'm going to be like, see, I knew it. It wasn't going to work here. I remember. Okay. In, in, and I remember in December of that following year, I said, where are we at for revenue? And where are we at for revenue for the year? She goes, I know you just want to hear your rights. Because <laughs> we ended up doubling after that first year. We did. Yeah, I remember that. So, so you came to the event, you were grossing an average of 6,000 a month. Yes. You decided to sign up for the Maya elite program, by the way, and you did not tell anybody, you didn't tell anyone in your family. You kept this a secret that you did this. I did. I, I like just, I never quiet, but I was quiet then those two months. I was like, not a word. So for two months, two months, you kept it a secret. Well, yes, because in February we had to go back to the next conference and I had to take Paula and I was like, ah, and I told her a week before we were on our way to eat. And I was like, yeah, I remember that one time I went to Orlando and she was like, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Well, let me ask you. So you went back from the seminar. What's the first thing you implemented? Did you do a holiday event when you went back? We did. We did a holiday event uh, a little different than we had done it the past years. And uh, I believe we made uh, $13,000 that month for so the that, holiday thing. So at the holiday thing, as soon as you left the seminar, within the next two weeks, you generated $13,000? Yes. So you more than doubled what you were averaging a month? Yeah. Okay. And then do you remember what you did in January or February? I believe in January of that following month, we did fourteen thousand dollars for the month. Okay, so so, and then February. I want to say we stayed in the high teens, mid mid to high teens. Following that, after me going to Orlando. So my point is, is it was now safe to tell your family that you signed up for this program because no, it was not safe. It was never safe. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. It was never safe. All right. Do they know now? Well, yes. Well, I, the reason why it was never safe, I was waiting for the wheel to fall off because then I was like, ah, I don't have to continue. Right. But he never, he hasn't, he has not fallen off. <laughs> okay, good. So I'm just curious. Do you remember you signed up December of 18? You were grossing like Tass said, maybe about 72,000 a year gross. What did you do in 2018 or 2019 uh we did i believe we doubled that so we did around 130. okay around 130. Mm -hmm. okay what did you do it well 2020 was the COVID year right 2020 was the COVID year on 2020 we did 170. so you grew even then 170. You grew even then what'd you do last year Last year we did uh, 348. All right. 348,000. 
So, so this is, if you're not getting inspired school owners, you have Miss Ramos, who lies and keeps secrets from her family, who is running a school grossing $6,000 a month, comes to Orlando to a seminar. By the way, she came four years earlier, did not believe the bald guy or the very hairy guy, neither one of us. She didn't, she didn't believe any of us. Waited four years, was doing 6,000 a month, and in 2019, you did 130,000 roughly. 140, 130? Yes. Okay. And then here we are, and then in 2020, during COVID, you did 170, mm -hmm. and now out of COVID, $340,000, which is an all, an average of what, 20, 28, 29,000 a month? Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, the, um, yeah. Three, and by the way, in, in a small town where you said your average income is, is like $30,000, average mm -hmm. annual income there? Yes. With 17,000 people in your town? Yes. So she must have 500 students paying 80 bucks a month. I mean, that's exactly right. Now we have 184 enrolled, and actually, our tuition was just a little bitty tiny bit of that 348 because everything else came from the other profit centers. So, exactly, exactly correct. And how's your January looking? Uh, it's looking pretty good. We started a little slow, but we had a really good fourth quarter, so I believe. We were still on that high and then we were like oh you know so we got to get it i mean the guys last quarter they pulled uh hundred and ten thousand dollars for the quarter so we had a really fantastic quarter and then january everybody comes back from break and but we're going up so so, so miss ramos what can you tell any school owners watching this that were in your boat that just are afraid or feel like this bald guy or this guy or they're just always trying to sell us something. In all seriousness, what do you think you can, what advice can you give to school owners to let them know that we're seriously genuine about making sure we do everything we possibly can to get our industry more professional and to get our people in our industry more successful? What advice can you give them? Well, you know, I'm a firm believer that people want to see you do good, but never better than them. But that doesn't apply with the Maya or the CMA family because everybody wants you to do better, you know? Um, and you need, you only know what you know, and everybody needs a coach. And you guys don't sugarcoat it. You guys just tell it like it is. And that just knowing that I'm gonna have to talk to Shane it's almost like I don't want to let Shane down because if I let Shane down, that means I didn't do my job. So that means our employees can't cash their check, right? And uh, it's just everybody just needs somebody to have their back, you know, and learn. I remember you guys saying, you know, you might be a black belt in Taekwondo, but you're a white belt in business, you know, and there's so many things that you just don't know. But, but let me ask you, though, but four years earlier, four years earlier than when you enrolled, you didn't take the leap of faith. What was stopping you four years earlier? Was because it you really didn't believe what we were saying or you felt like it just wouldn't work for you? What was it that made you not do it? I feel like four years earlier, I knew everything, you know? And I'm like, oh, I know that and I know that. So when I came on, I said, you know, I'm just going to go in with blind eyes and I'm going to listen and I'm going to do to everything they tell me to do, you know, and we did. I'm a firm believer try everything once, twice, if you like it. So we went in, we went all the way in and we tried everything and everything worked, you know, it might have not work at the first try, but we kept on going and going and going and, um, and it worked. Well, Tass, you worked with Miss Ramos. What was it like working with Miss Ramos? And and did you have to, you know, get on her ass a little bit sometimes, or what? Did he, Miss no. Ramos? There there were times, yeah. I mean, you know, and 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 you know, it's funny because 
I don't know if there was ever a call that we had where it was all serious, right? I mean, we had a lot of fun in the calls. I mean, she always makes me laugh and she's got some quotes that I won't say on, on, on how busy I was going to keep her, but um, you know, just things that, that always made me laugh, but then she would get off the phone and she would go execute and she communicated. And this is the thing, this is where I think, this is where I get excited, right? Like for me as a consultant and a whatever coach, just basically someone that has already walked the path before you and, and implemented the systems, it's all I really am. And I'm just sharing it, right? And I'm sharing my journey, my experience. And, and hey, if you do these things that there, have been proven over time, it's going to help your school. It's always fun to work with people that execute and take action. Um, and that's exactly what Miss Ramos did. I mean, there's times that she didn't want to necessarily do things. There's times that she didn't believe some things were going to work. And then she would come back and it was like, I know you just want to hear it again. You were right. And I, and, and it's not that I want to be right. I want to be right for you. And I want to make sure that you're successful. And so it, it, it's been an absolute journey. She keeps setting goals. She keeps hitting goals. And by the way, Miss Ramos, three years ago, you were on the, were you on the floor to teach you most of the classes? I was. Paula and what, I were teaching what, most of the class. What is it? And what, 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 what did your staff look like at that time just three years ago? Three years ago, I was holding a pad, answering the phone. Paula was trying to get everything ready. Uh, she would come from a 12-hour shift from her salon to the school. We were work, work till 8, 8.30. I was doing all the cleaning. We were doing everything. That was three years ago. I mean, and today, I mean... We, we are not needed, you know, because we are developing a staff, you know, so we like today we're taking the day off. We're going out to see some kind of show and, you know, and if she doesn't want to come in, she doesn't have to. There's not a, a need. We have freedom uh, from our school. We're not attached to it anymore. So what does your staff look like today? We have uh, one full time program director, one full time chief instructor one full-time senior instructor and two part-timers yeah fantastic. unbelievable it's unbelievable you know, because you're changing their life too 100 percent. it's funny because miss ramos will do things right and, and it's just like i'll give an example so when we first started working together i think one of her side hustles was she had a food truck and so when we talk about doing our, our partners in education program and bringing in donuts or pizza for lunch. Now Ramos, she went to the school and she made them all tacos. Like she took it yeah. to a whole other level. First week of May, I always take it off. Miss Jennifer knows she has to book all the schools. Teachers love tacos, man. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's always been fun working with her and, and uh, just love the fact that she executes and she keeps pushing always to get to the next level. And that's, we always say that's the biggest secret, right? It's like, don't be an information junkie. Take the information, go get it, go implement it and get after it. And she's one of those clients when I call her, she knows her numbers. And that's the other reason why I think she has become very successful is because she understands and she knows the numbers and tracks the numbers. So, so Miss, Miss Ramos, Mr. Curry has a question. What worked? What practical steps did you take that you weren't taking before? That's uh, a hard question because they don't understand the it. So you have Go to ahead. start, some, I said, basically all the steps. You have to start small. You can't do everything all at once. Like if you, just because you hire someone full time doesn't mean that you're going to step out and let them run the school. You know, there are systems that we have to develop and we are wanting to branch out. So right now our main focus is developing systems so we can duplicate them and implement them. But whenever I was, uh, whenever it was just us two, uh, we started very small. Uh, we started from within and then work our way out. Uh, so at the beginning, we weren't implementing all the profit centers, you know, events, retail, all that. So with the amount of students that we had, we started slowly implementing all that. And then we started outsourcing, you know, getting new students, you know, uh, you have to start with what you got, you know? So that's what, that's where we started. And then eventually it all came full circle. 
And, and even and, though, like, you know, this last year was a record year, there's a, still so many things we miss that we're going to go back and try to do what we did last year and then some because, you know, sky's the limit. And uh, like I said, you know, if there's so many things that we missed last year <laughs> that we can even do better this year now that we know what we did wrong. So I think too, Mr. Curry, it's 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 not about things that you weren't doing before. It's just about doing them differently. And I always say that it's not what you do, it's how you do it. And it's all about presentation and understanding the systems behind it. And that's where people miss it. I mean, at the end of the day, she enrolls new students, you enroll new students. You charge students, she charges students. But it's not how much you charge, it's how you charge them right not not about what rate i mean she's in a very small lower economic area but it doesn't matter and this is what we keep telling you after 20 years of of consulting we've consulted people in the most wealthiest of areas to the poorest of areas and i'm going to be honest with you there was a time where i think maybe we had systems that just really worked well in dense populated areas with a higher income and I wasn't sure if how they would work everywhere else. Today, that I'm very sure. I, I just know we, we only adopted systems that can be duplicated everywhere. And you're, you're seeing it firsthand and, you know, for five years or whatever, we've been coming on this show, but I think it's good to hear it, you know, from, from the people who have been there where a lot of people are. So, and you know, go ahead, Tess. The, the other thing too, Mets, is this for Mr. Curry is, you know, it, it just depends, everybody, there's not a one, there is a one size fits all. I mean, we, we do the same systems regardless of whether you're a, a Taekwondo school, a karate school, a Jiu Jitsu school, the, the business systems will overlay on top of what you're doing. However, depending on who you are and where you're at with your business determines, which is why one-on-one -on -one coaching is so powerful because it, we can find what is the, what is the number one thing that we need to work on with your school and we can dial that up quick, very, very quickly. As opposed to, here's everything that you should, I'm going to small on the screen, here's everything that you should have in play, and then you're trying to go back and put all those things in play, and eventually you'll get there, but there are there are blatantly obvious things that stick out to us when we look at schools, and we, we need to address that first. Let's get that whole plug, that's the biggest hole in the boat, let's plug that first, now let's move on and move forward, and I think, you know, that's, that is the power of the, the of one-on-one of -on -one coaching with the individual as opposed to, you know, just doing it like, hey, just go do all these things and your school's going to be fixed. We got to find out where are you at, where do you want to go, and what is the fastest pathway for us to get there. And, and that's really how, how, how we break things down. Some people need help with retention. Some people need help with enrollment. Some people need help with pricing structure. Some people need help with their, you know, upgrade programs or whatever it may be, right? So it just depends on, on where you're at because there, there's things that we all do well but there are those things also that we need help with in our business, and that's where we dial in and focus on. And, and Ms. Ramos has just done a great job of being able to, you know, we, of course, try and break things down and make it easy and make it palatable, right, and in and, and, and some easy steps. Um, but at first, sometimes it does take, like it feels like you're taking a sip out of a fire hose. There's a lot of information coming at you. Um, but she did a great job of managing those things and taking the time and executing and implementing, and as a result, you know, she was executing two or three or four different things at a time. And this is why you saw that growth really start to rise fast with her, which is awesome. Absolutely. You know, and, and like you guys, if I, if I get on a call with Shane and he tells me to do something, two weeks later when he calls me back, if I didn't implement that, I not only just wasted his time, I wasted my time, you know, and then we start over from zero. So you have to have an open mind. You can't be like, oh, you know, because at the end of the day, they're, they have their own business, but it's up to you to want to grow your business because uh, that's for your future and the future of your family. So perfect example was, uh, I believe it was uh, maybe December of 19, Shane, you were after me to get those appointments for the holiday set event. And he's like, Ms. Ms. Ramos, you have to get all these appointments, you know? And I'm like, oh, okay, fine. And uh, and he said, great. Now with these appointments, 
you should average around twenty thousand dollars for a day and i'm like okay whatever shane you're crazy whatever right well the event and they came and I believe we averaged about twenty three thousand dollars that day in four hours. And I'm like, oh, I hate it when he's right. And I'm going to have to look at him on Monday and tell him he did. He was right. So <laughs> if I didn't execute what he told me, you know, we wouldn't have been successful. No, hold, because Miss Ramos, you talk about this just in a sentence as if like, yeah, you know, and I did twenty three thousand dollars in four hours and he was right. Look. I hope people just heard what you said. You were grossing 6,000 a month. And are you saying in December, last month, in four hours in the one holiday event, you did 23,000 in cash? No, that was December of 19. Oh, uh, excuse me. I'm last sorry. month, it was stupid. Uh, Ms. Jennifer had a hold my drink moment and he's like oh you she was like you did that watch me so our program director did fifty one thousand dollars for a holiday event in four hours so you did fifty one thousand dollars in four hours cash yes now here's what everyone's thinking well they're either thinking you're lying or they're thinking okay you cashed everybody out and you your billing is is down how much did you lose in billing? Because you did 51,000 in December. I believe uh, we lost a couple of hundred bucks because some of the people that were on billing decided to jump on the other program. But with the people that we enrolled, that made up for it. So it was a. So your billing is basically the same as yes. it was in December. Billing didn't go down, but you generated $51,000 in cash that you put into the bank in yes. four hours yes i mean you know it's just so funny it's it's let me ask you when you signed up in orlando were you scared i was i was very were scared of or were you scared of paula i was scared of paula more, more than i was scared of everything else but i knew that if i didn't do it then i would never know what we were capable of and what if this would work and i had nothing to lose at the time so i went ahead and did it and i remember sitting there at that little park in front of your office i was like there was a guy walking a dog and the dog had a tutu and i was like man like i want to be that successful you know <laughs> like i want to be so successful my dog my dog walks around with the tutu and uh <laughs> And I think I'm getting there. My dog goes to daycare now. See? <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, man. You made it. You arrived. <laughs> oh, that's good. So, that's my, good. Last question for me is, did you think when you signed up that three years later, you would be where you're at now? No, I did not. I for sure didn't. No, I thought we were going to be teaching class until the end of times. I mean, I... Three years ago, the thought of opening multiple locations in the near future wouldn't have even crossed my mind because we felt like we had to do all the work and we can't be in two places at once, you know, but you guys have showed us how to, the systems should work. So you can be in multiple places at once if you have the right development for the staff and the right systems in place. You know, sky's the limit. Did the quality of your student's skill level go down? Absolutely not. I think the quality of our classes has increased tremendously. Uh, and I believe it's because of the training that we can provide for our instructors <laughs> now. You know, we can, last, uh, last seminar in October, we were able to take all our instructors. Um, the school provided plane ticket, food, hotel, everything they needed for them to go train. And he has, uh, even the parents come to me and they're like, wow, you know, we have parents that have been with us for seven, eight years. And they're like, you know, I remember when you were teaching all the classes, when you guys were over there on the floor to now the program has like completely done at 180. And uh, we believe in quality and quantity. And, you know, the classes hold a certain level that they have to stay at. And the instructors do a very good job at keeping it that way. <laughs> And there's a question here from Mr. Olson. I think you said you had 180 students. What is your eventual goal for your student count? 
uh, on this location, I believe we can get to 250 uh, with a, and then the other locations, I mean, depending on the thing. And you know, our school's not big. Uh, what do you think? Maybe 1,700 square feet. Our floor mat, our floor space is 900 square feet. So our school is not big at all. I believe we have like 10 parking spots. And parents fight over them. But everybody wants in because, you know, the level of our program has just skyrocketed. Now, 10 parking spots. Does your taco cart take up one of those spots? What is it? Does the taco cart take up one of the 10 parking spots? No, we actually sold the taco truck. Now I have a little pushy one that I take to the schools. I look beautiful. She, she upgraded the taco truck for her for her new Bronco. There's a bicycle in the back. Yes, I did upgrade it uh, for my new Bronco with my custom seats that I can afford now thanks to Maya Edge and Elite program. And just for everybody watching, what percentage does Shane get of your of your growth? He gets no percentage. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, I haven't seen the, the, the check in the mail yet. And you know what? But I, I was gonna mention that because she said it. Like I call and I tell her and I get on her up bo about booking the appointments and here's what we can do. And I get passionate because it, it, at the end of the day, it's not because she makes more money, I'm going to make more money. That's just not how it works, right? At the end of the day, I'm passionate because I've seen it happen so many times before, and I know what's possible. And it's moments like these that remind me of why we do what we do or why I do what I do. And it's, 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 it's like an instructor with their student, right? Your glory days may have been you getting gold medals and grand champions, but when you have your students that can do bet the same or better than you, I remember that feeling as an instructor. When one of my first students won grand champion, I was like, oh, my God, it was amazing, right? That's how it feels to be able to give back in the business. When when we can really help and, and because of the information that has just come through us and we're just the conduit and we're just giving you the information um, because we've collected it and we're just the funnel, it's just amazing just to, to see the growth and, and, and hear the growth and sit back sometimes because it's like watching your kids grow, right? Sometimes what happens, you're like, you don't realize how tall they get. Like someone seems like, God, oh, they got tall. We forget sometimes as we're working through all this stuff, how far we've actually really come in just, you know, 36 months essentially, right? And you look at that from that perspective and it's amazing. And, and this is why we're so passionate, why we push because – we know we can help. We know we can get to the next level. It has nothing to do. If you said, you know what, Shane, yeah, I'll book the 20 appointments and you don't book 20 appointments and you make $0, that doesn't affect me one way or the other. Or you book them and you make $51,000, that doesn't affect me either. So, and you said it before, Ms. Ramos, I mean, at the end of the day, um, the, the, the clients that we love, this is if you're a client watching, the clients that we love the most are the clients that take the information and execute because we don't feel like that's a waste of time. It's an honor to have those calls. It's an honor to be a part of those conversations. And we know you're going to grow and you're going to be successful if you do those things. So, again, I, I, I just can't say it enough. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of the team and, and what you guys have been able to accomplish in such a short period of time. And I know what the goals that you have set and when, with the work ethic you and your team have, you guys, you guys are off to the moon. It's going to be amazing. And Mr. Costa is asking, what was your student count in 2018 from now and what made it go up so fast? So I know you're around 180 hey, hey, now. Pay attention, Mr. Costa. We have 184 now. We had 95 when we joined Elite in December of 18. But I believe in December of 19, we had maybe 130 students. So not that much growth student-wise. However, because we were able to implement all those other uh, profit centers, our revenue grew, you know, without our student count growing. And what made it go up so fast is knowing your profit centers and knowing what you need to be doing in the back end and also having a show it on the floor, you know, because the main sale has to be on the floor. And uh, that's what made it go up so fast. What, what is your what is your biggest source of new students? Uh, 
since we're in a small town, most of it is word of mouth. But right now, uh, Facebook, our advertising on Facebook, it's a big source. Have you uh, ever done a mass intro before? I have done a mass intro, and it was a great hit. Only like five students showed up, and out of those five, like two and enro three enrolled, and two are still here, and they've been here for about a year and a half. So, yeah, but that's another yeah. thing. You know, mass intro works for some schools. They have amazing, massive amount of kids to show up. Mass intros may work for me, may not. I did it. It worked. I gained two students. They're still active as of right now. So it wasn't a waste of time for us. You know, we, we got two students that we didn't have before. And and listen, I'm going to say this because, you know, I, I also want to give the other side of it because as people are watching, they're going, oh, man, this is like, this is a great story, right? It's a great feel-good story. But there's another, the other, the, the challenge that they don't know about is you also have and we're working through an attrition challenge or retention challenge we are because we've had some we've had some growing pain so at one point her active count was two what was it we were close to 250. close to 250. yeah and she does a great job in the community with community events getting people in getting them enrolled and because we've had some we, we we've had some experience in fast growth there are some growing pains, but that's something that we're working on and we're getting better with is the attrition. So as that starts to play out and even out, she's gonna grow even more and even faster. And by the way, there's a lesson here because everyone, when I say everyone, I mean the, the vast majority. That's what I mean But when I say everyone. But in our industry, everybody says to Tass and I or any of the other consultants, uh, I need more students, I need more students, I need more students. What you really need is more revenue. We want more students, but we need more revenue because revenue is what's gonna pay our bills, right? So like Ms. Ramos said, where her student count has doubled in three years, her, her uh, revenue has like more than quadrupled. It's, it's increased six times because we don't know in our industry how to run the business properly and maximize profitability by giving people choices in our students. But at the same time, if you go from 90 students to 180 students, you've doubled your student count, but there's attrition along the way. So of course you're enrolling more, but you're also retaining better. You're retaining those students. So we wanna do both, but if you remember your, your answer, Ms. Ramos at the beginning was we work from the inside out. When we start working with schools, we don't say, okay, here's what you gotta do to get more students. We typically say, don't worry about new students yet because the new students you get in are coming into a broken system. We got to fix the system first. Then we'll start working on getting you more students. But you got to make sure you understand that. And then Mr. Yeah. Klingermeyer, Mr. Klingermeyer says, uh, so are you still looking at a second location? Oh, yeah. You guys just wait. We have a plan. We're going to take over the whole martial arts industry. We have a plan four locations in the next five years with the 1.5 million dollar revenue you, you just watch me but stay out of florida <laughs> <laughs> but again with the with the system that were broken so when i was teaching all the classes and paul was helping me we were the owners right so we were bending over backwards to make sure everybody was happy and everybody stayed in the loop and this and that but as we grew we had to kind of let go of some of the chores that we were doing you know a new instructor came in we hire a full-time instructor so they might not know how to talk to parents how you would do things we also hire a program director paul hire a program director so they might not know the phone call procedure and all that so we had growing pains because things we had cracks and people were sliding through but if we were like oh okay never mind y'all are fired let me just go back and do it again then you'd never you would never grow you know so you have to con like con con train your people you know to where they're doing the stuff that you did once the way you did it and the way you want to do it and you want it done. And that goes back to those systems. You know, if everybody knows everything, how it was, how it was supposed to be performed, then eventually the more you train, it comes natural for them 
and the company grows because at the end of the day it's not just about me it's about the company and what the company can provide for our employees so everybody's has the best interest of the company in mind and i believe that's one of the things that have made us grow so fast too right yep i mean you know the other thing miss ramos i would say where you're an inspiration is task we're just i'll just be blunt you can you can weigh in on this but anybody that jumps on with i can only speak for maya right anybody that jumps on maya with us specifically in the elite program because of the one-on-one -on -one hand holding right we you have a personal consultant basically that's going to be specific to your challenges and where you're at um if it's not working for you it's because you're not the one working it i mean and, and and i'm just being blunt i mean you there is nobody that can say it doesn't work for me i mean you are at the extreme miss ramos you're at the extreme in the town you're in the income level the population there i mean and you're making it work yeah you know can, can i ask this question i'm just curious because you're averaging close to 30 grand a month how much is your rent can't tell you that it's uh my rent is nine hundred dollars a month <laughs> guys i want and you I'm to hear that moving. <laughs> her rent in this town is nine hundred dollars a month so when you're doing thirty thousand a month you're doing a little bit better than break even just a little bit i mean you know you're just a, now by the way I have a lease and I'm signing that lease and my rent all in is going to be 11,000 a month. Well, don't move to Tahlequah. We don't want you here. <laughs> I never move anywhere. I can't pronounce. This is true. So yeah, no, our, our, it's pretty low here, but you know, you're going to be mayor soon. Are you going to be mayor of the town soon or i don't know they might dig up some dirt on me so let's not let's not do that <laughs> all right we'll start but, that. Uh, no yeah so yeah our town is very small everybody loves me and hey uh, by the way can am kid hopefully your landlord isn't watching no he doesn't right. even have a, uh he still has a flip thumb so he's fine <laughs> <laughs> good very very good well, hey, Cass, anything else before we sign off? Yeah, I mean, just to echo what you said earlier. I mean, you know, we 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 have there's so many um, you know people that we work with that that really do get great results, and the the results happen as as a result of you putting in the work. And um, and I said earlier, I mean, one of the, the the biggest compliments as a as a consultant that I can have is take the information go execute and make it work because you'll change your own life when you do that um and because there's times there are times that i've had in the past where i've got on the phone with metzger late at night and i'm just i'm frustrated because i have a client that's just not listening and you know we we, we carry those things with us as much as we shouldn't um but the reason i'm frustrated not because it affects my paycheck one way or the other it's because i know what we can do for those clients and so this is part of why we want to bring people on and have them share the stories because, you know, I had a story to share years ago, right? But now as a consultant, right, my, my story may not hold as much weight anymore. And there's so many more lives that we've affected and, 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 and influenced and giving people options and options on your Bronco to even get a Bronco and then options for the, the custom seats and to do your vacations. And life is always better with options. And, and we want to provide that for you and we can do it we can do that if you are willing to roll up your sleeves get busy and and have an empty cup and, and, and take action there's there's not anyone that can't do it. you're going to see people that are going to come on miss ramos in a small town you talked we had uh, chaconan a couple weeks ago i mean we're, we're going to keep doing this because we just want you to see someone's story is going to resonate with who you are and where you're at which is why it's such an inspiration for us to do this because literally mr hanzu um, he, he, I don't know, and, and Mr. Hans, I'm going to call you out on this because I don't know if he put it in here, if he just sent me a text during the show, but he just said, it's so inspiring to see someone where I'm at right now that they were there once before as well. And that's exactly what we're trying to show. Like, 
now he realizes like this this is possible for him he just got started with a one-on-one coaching and and there's great things in store for him he's another one who's taking action right now so some of these stories are going to resonate if it resonates with you don't wait four years to take action right take action and get on it because it literally can change your life in, in one simple question would you like to do the elite program or not a yes or no answer literally could change the trajectory of your life for the better or for the worse. Like for me, it was for the better. And you can keep it a secret from your family too, right. everyone. Right on. <laughs> right? So, I mean, whatever you got to do. Look, that's it. I mean, Miss Ramos, you you inspire me. You know, I mean, it's just so great that to, to hear the story. And I think the inspiration is if there is anyone on here that contacts us, right, and wants more information on, on, on Maya, um, I think the inspiration is, you know, if I listen to this story and I heard everything you said again about your town and everything else, I would be like, well, if she could do it, I could do it. I mean, that's what I would be saying, right? And it would make me more confident and 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 uh, to try it because you've said it three times during this show. All right, I have nothing to lose. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. You know. That little decision, you were already in business 10 years, 11 years before I've, you... Uh, so we've been in business 11 years. So what was that? Maybe eight years? Before all right, that? you've been in business. Okay, eight years of running your school. And all of a sudden you're like, all right, I'm going to do this. And it changed your, your life, you know, the direction of your life. And your, and your years. Definitely, it did. And you know, it only changed the direction of our life. In our family i mean it also changed the direction of uh our employees you know they make more money than the average work less, work less. i mean our people work two to eight uh four days a week sometimes sometimes we have to put in a full week but it definitely uh at least it definitely changed where i would be now if i would have we were signed up eight years ago or four years ago who, who knows where would we be but everything happens for a reason and we might have not been ready then our mind would have been open but uh we can't wait to see where we are in the next three years you know and see how many opportunities come our way so we can't read either it's going to be amazing yes for sure for sure and if i could say the only negative to being in the maya program the only negative to this is you have to tell shane he's right a lot i know you know but it's okay sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do and you can do what you want to do but i know, need i need help with the confidence so that always helps me too right and i have too much confidence so you know it's a perfect match uh <laughs> but definitely you know small school owners it doesn't matter how small you are how small your town is um uh, if you're willing to put in the work it's gonna it's gonna be you're gonna be successful but you have to have an open mind and be willing to do it and don't just try it once you know just keep going don't get uh disappointed if it doesn't work out the first time last question i promise but this is interesting so you got in the program you learned how to do all this why are you still in it like why do you feel like you still need more because i it doesn't matter how many times you hear it you always find something that you can change to make it better and to me i get distracted a lot so if i have someone on me all the time making me hold accountable because i'm going to be honest with you half of the things you guys said business wise Paula told me, but I didn't listen to her. But then when somebody else is, so somebody else says it, it's like, you know, so I've heard so many times from her, she's like, I've said that. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, it's different. But when it was how else. she said it. Yeah, right on, right on. How you say it, right? <laughs> but no, but it's just, you guys just keep going, you know, when they shut down and COVID happened, I swear, I was thinking about it the other day. You know, we had a meeting almost every week, you know, coaching us through the whole thing, whether it was the PPP or like, hey, telling us it's going to be okay. Don't freak out. You guys might have been freaking out on your end, but you had your people 
like, oh, we got to be there for them, you know, and you guys never let us by ourselves, you know, walked us every single step through this pandemic that we are still in, but uh, we never felt alone. And I, and I think as, uh, as business owners, a lot of uh, the small schools were a little scared, but you know, we made it through. Yes, you did. Not only did you make it through, you had a record year. We did. Yeah. So yeah. Nice job. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, awesome. Miss Ramos, thank you so much for taking the time. And uh, thank you for the entertainment that this show normally doesn't have. So thanks for bringing the entertainment. Good entertainment instead of the dumb jokes that Mets and I always talk about. So we appreciate you. We are so happy for you and all of your success and continued success. And um, looking forward to seeing you next month in Orlando. We'll be there. And you're staying for the party, right? We are staying for the party in... Uh... I'll be tan because we are actually going to Bora Bora the week before that. Because, you know, I'm fancy like that. Well, you're <laughs> welcome. <laughs> thank you, Mesker. Thank you for sending me over there. I'll think of and you please. while I'm sitting over on my over water, the water bungalow thing. And and make sure your dog is in a, a daycare, too, while you're gone. <laughs> yes, the reservation is already made. Okay, very good. Uh, good stuff. Ms. Ramos, you're awesome. Thank you for everything. Thanks for being on and everybody else. We look forward to seeing you next week. We'll always bring something, you know, don't know what it is, but we'll bring you something every week. Right on. All right. Appreciate you guys. Thanks again, Ms. Thank Ramos. You. Thanks, right. Ms. Ramos. Go have fun. Bye. Bye-bye.